Rain day. What's going on, guys? Andy here, cut and clean lawn care, and you get to listen to the sweet sounds of my washer and dryer as it goes through its cycle right now, doing whatever the heck it's doing. You get to listen to the sweet sounds. It's not like it's annoying or anything. No. But guys, I'm here with Danny. It's a rain day today. I don't know if Danny was planning on mowing today or not. Is this no. one of your dip mowing days? No. Yeah, I, well, I was planning on it, but you know, hey. I had thoughts and aspirations when I saw the weather was going to be in like the 80s. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to go. But All we right. finally got that rain that we've been looking for. So that I'm happy about, man. I've been wanting rain for a while. I've had so many text messages from clients just saying, "Don't even bother." Some I haven't done in three weeks. Just nothing. And I've drove by these properties, and it literally has not grown. No. At all. At all. Not even kind of. It's crazy, man. Nothing. Nothing at all. Well, we got ten people in here. No comments or questions. What do you got going on, man? Nothing? Nothing. Nothing at all. I did a... Did the video for the 6500K this morning. There you go. Got that uploaded, so that's pretty much it for me. I'm, I'm, uh, I, there's a lot of videos I need to do, but I just, I've just i got so much other stuff going on. Yeah, I'm kind of the same. Man. I have all these aspirations of recording. Like The minute I start the day, and then I'm just like, I just want to get the work done. So yeah. I'm losing a lot of motivation on it. Which it's is so cool. hot. It's so nasty, dude. So nasty, hot, dusty. Muggy. But I shot a little overview this morning on the uh, still FC91 Edger, which will be up a little bit later this evening. But it wasn't even a cool video because I didn't get to do anything with it like I thought I was going to this morning. But I just did an overview on it, so it came out all right. But uh, it says I feel like I'm hell. It's 100 or so here. Yeah, dude. It's dropped off today, man. It's been in the hundreds nonstop now. We're looking at like 80s right now, but it's going to jump right back up to 100 tomorrow and be nasty with the rain we got today. Nasty. It is, dude. It's going to be gross. It's going to be horrible is what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I got that video done. A couple other things. I got to do my uh, 10K thing. I got to get all else set up. I know I have a really big, awesome giveaway at the end of this year. But I can't discuss it amongst. <laughs> can't discuss it yet. I got to get it all sorted out. But it's going to be no, awesome. No discussions. What else do I got going on? Gravely sending me the uh, 36 standard again as a demo this year. Tell him send me season. one, will you? Man, I think I'm actually going to buy it this time, to be honest with you. I'm going to do the demo and buy it out cheap. Because I'm so sick of using that walk behind 36. Like, yeah. beyond, it's beyond me. I like I hate it. Can't stand it, man. What's up, Elegant Lons? How you doing, man? Yeah, that'd probably be the one thing I'd like is uh, to get a 36. Yeah, I, I might even go to a 52 next year also. Maybe not do the 48s and, and, and go with a 52. Yeah. Get if I if I had a 36 standard, I'd probably just get a 52 or probably just get a 52 as well. Oh, yeah. Because the 48 is kind of your common middle ground. but Right. But I've got a 60, so I might as well just stick with the 48 and say screw it. Yeah. And I, and I basically got a 52 for the most part now. I got a 48, but I have that... Uh, discharge shoot on it so when it's up or down doesn't matter it's about 50 inches exactly so it's like what's the point there's you're talking two inches yep. what's going on man what blades do you have on the 36 and i love it man uh the 36 has three inch notched i believe high lift three inch notch code 336 standards i hear you man i passed on it last year they they sent me a good deal on it i should have bought it but i was like nah i'm gonna skip it you know, 36 properties. But this year, I'm regretting it. So I'm going to get it again this year as a demo. Uh, do some videos on it. And I plan on buying it out for sure. We got two inches of rain down here last night. I got some rain. Thurbrows, better than nothing. But not enough. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be enough to green things back up dramatically. We just needed it to cool it down a little bit, you know. So the grass that is growing is going to help. The people that are aerating their yards, obviously, it's going to help. The people that are using their irrigation systems and watering, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, Murr's in the house. Murr's in the house. 
What's going on, guys? What's up, Solo Landscape? And how you doing, man? What do y'all think of the 32 standard? I don't think about it. I, don't, I know nothing about it, man. Yeah, right. I don't know nothing about it. I don't. I don't know. I don't know why you would get a 32 over a 36, but I've, I've ran into one gate in my entire life that a 36 would not fit in. That's all. But yeah. Obviously, it's not going to be too much of me. You're only talking like one pass, probably in the backyard. So the difference between a 32 and 36, as far as productivity and how long it's going to take, can't be that much. They're, they're right. basically the same thing. But yep. I don't know what the price difference is or anything like that, man. New Orleans getting rain for the past few days. Yeah, man, you're down there in that area, the rain area. Send it up to us, would you? I know. We need about we'll, a week. It's like this. It's like pointless. Like I'm excited about it, but it's pointless. It's raining. It's going to rain for like an hour and a half and stop. I need like an all day rain. Yep. We need one of those things, man. Old one nine eight. I think he's giving away his phone number. I don't know what he's doing. Roger that. I got some other cool videos coming up this week or next week. Guy designed a uh, new product. It's still patent pending. I don't want to talk about it too much right now. I'll talk about it when the video comes up. But it's to make your life easier. It's something we've all thought about and been like, why is this like this? And this guy came up with the design to help fix it. So I'm going to test these out and see if uh, it actually helps or not. It has to do with trimmers and edgers. I'll say that much. Oh, man. Drown in the saltine cracker challenge. It's it's not that that you take the the trimmer head off and you put the edger head on. No. Okay. No. Thank not God. That. All yeah, right. Nothing, nothing that happy difficult. Then. I'm happy then. <laughs> <laughs> How's the lawn out there? It's dry. Dusty. Dusty and dry. It's like dusty roads. All right. That's bad. Keep up the great work, man. I appreciate that, man. Elegant. I haven't been doing nothing. You got to be talking to Andy because I, uh, I ain't did crap lately. I've been so freaking busy doing other things. Dude, I'm the same. I'm trying. I just, I feel like every time I go out to record like a vlog for the day, I got to consider it to be a vlog and it's just, it is what it is. But every time I go out to record for this stuff, I feel like, man, I'm just doing the same thing over and over and over and over and it kind of gets relentless and. I don't know. That's why I'm enjoying doing so much of the stuff uh, me and Randy got going on on G4 Outdoors, man. Because I'm just more passionate about fishing and hunting and, you know, stuff like that. The lawn care side of it just becomes a work. And when it's Uh-oh. Punching holes in drywall or something over there. Oh, we're back. Yay. What happened? I don't know. You cut out for a minute. Like, it just completely cut out oh did it that's weird probably because i have everybody using my internet at my house right now no, that's not i got a kid running around in the background yelling you hear that i do guy wants to know if you still like your grand stand no i hate it <laughs> it's horrible <laughs> it's the worst thing ever uh no i love it still love it no. still love it that's why i bought another toro everything i own now is toro so this is what I don't get. And it's done this to me a couple times. I don't know if anyone else has any enlightenment they want to send on it. Uh, some guy put, check out Danny's channel and subscribe. He's doing a $6,500 or 6500 giveaway. Help him get to 7000 marked by Sunday. But yet it blocks the message. Even though there's literally no content in that at all. Oh, I was like, I didn't see nothing. Where, yeah, where are you Because right that? now it says this message is held for review. <laughs> I'm like, there's nothing in that message. That would need it to be held for review. <laughs> like, what is that? Well, thank you, Scotty Deaton. And did you check out my last video? It was our fishing trip to Canada. I have not, but I appreciate you uh, saying that. And if you can, dude, remind me. Actually, I'm going to write it down. Cause I'm 7, gonna... 7,000 before Sunday. That'd be, that'd be awesome, man. That'd be a record for me. That's like a 100 right a now. day. I got to run out to Logan Paul's house. All right. So low cuts. So fishing. low cuts. I'm just gonna put fishing. I can go to his channel and check it out. Yeah, I got a couple of videos in the basket there on G4 Outdoors. Me and Randy went to uh, Blue Springs Lake. Believe it or not, 
smaller lake, obviously. But we were slaying for a while, man. The bluegill bites nuts out there. Had about a 10, I can't remember, 10 or 11 pound flathead catfish we caught out there at night. But man, that's a guy that can stay up and fish all night, man. Around midnight, I get tired. I move my seats off the front of the boat, tuck them away, and I lay down and I fall asleep. I fell asleep till about 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I can't do it, man. Boy goes noodling. I'm wore out by the end of the day. Yeah. I just set my stuff up differently, man. I'm one of those people that doesn't want to be working my life away. So I try to set up, and I, I take you know, three days off during the week if or not during the week, but for that week, if you know what I mean. So I try to do like one day during the week and I want my Saturday and Sunday off for family. So that one day during the week, I can get things done. If uh, Braden didn't have anything going, I can take my son somewhere and do stuff. But I always like to have three days total that I can space out to do stuff. A roller on your roller. What's a roller? What you had time to go? No. Uh, Danny's got that roller, that roller life. <laughs> hey, that roller strap better than anything out there. <laughs> Except for that, stock gravely. Got that strap life shit. Only straps better than that because you filter everything. Hey, man, burn, hey. burn. And it still stripes better. Oh, shit. <laughs> filtered. Horrible, horrible. Getting one day off of the week at the moment. I hear you, man. But as a solo owner operator, man, if I'm working five or six days a week, I'll be beat to I will wear myself out. And I know uh, people talk about burnout and stuff like that. But dude, when Monday rolls around, if I'm working six days a week, 12 to, you know, 16 properties a day, dude, done. James Johnson, I'm not going to give him the privilege, but he put, we're all stupid inbred redneck hillbillies. All of those things. We're stupid. We're inbred. We're redneck. And we're hillbillies. Coming from the guy that has two first names. That'd be James Johnson. <laughs> Scotty, man, we me and me and Andy both run the equipment defender X. And I mean that's to me that's that's a love them racks. So Yeah, man, I haven't had a problem besides like there's one one of the things I would say I wish they would change, and a lot of other companies are like that too. But on the key lock, it's a universal key. I don't like that. I use the combination lock personally, and a lot of other companies will will do that too, or you get the one key that does it all. But it's me. it's uh they they told me that they have different keys. Oh, do they? He he said that they have two different locks and two different keys for the key lock. He said, "If you like, if like, if you ordered a rack and I ordered a rack, then we shouldn't be able to. We should have different keys." Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, I could be wrong about that. Now, I, I don't know if since it's me, you, and Blake, if you know, he knows we're not going to steal each other's stuff if we have the same lock. But I did talk to him about that and ask him because there was a lot of people worried about that. And the answer I got from Matt was if, uh, you know, if, if, if I had a rack here and somebody bought a rack in Tennessee, then they would probably have the same key. Um, but if, you know, a majority of some, if they ship some close to each other, then they switch the keys. Right. Yeah, Cause to me, I mean, it's not a big deal because the only right. time someone's going to have to literally get a key out and unlock my stuff is while I'm there mowing. Cause right. I don't leave my stuff in my trailer overnight. You know what I'm saying? So it's well, I like the, uh, I like the combination lock better anyway. I went to the combination lock um, with my new trailer, and I love it way better than the keys. Oh, yeah. That's a 56 to 10 lawns per day. That's awesome. And home by one. Heck yeah. Sometimes I am. Sometimes I'm out there mowing 20 in a day just so I don't have to mow it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I I work twelve hours to get done, just so I can be done early the next day if I have to. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, that ten to fifteen a day range is my favorite because I'm literally working, you know, in, in a nine to five or eight to 
five at that time. Mm-hmm. But I'm not mowing from you know sun up to sundown. So I like being able to set everything up to where I know what I got to get done in that day and treat it like a job. Work those hours. I can come home, eat dinner with the family, stuff like that. Some BB. See, even even Blake, he just put everyone subscribe to my channel and it blocked it. <laughs> well, that's good. You can you can block that one. That's good. <laughs> He don't he don't shout out anybody else's channel, so forget Blake. I think he shouts out mine. <laughs> <laughs> Block him. It's crazy, but y'all go hard. Yeah, it's it is what it is. There's there's definitely some days, like today, being like a high seventies, low eighties, if it wasn't raining, I could get a ton done today. I could mow probably eighteen to twenty yards and be fine. But when it's a hundred degrees like it's been, you're lucky to get ten to twelve out of me. It just it just beats you to death. Oh yeah, it's been hotter than crap. Yep. I visit Brian at Top Notch Lawn. That's a declarative statement. I don't have any. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. That warrants no response. It's like, hey man, can I ask you a question? Yeah, shoot, man. Uh, blue's my favorite color. Okay. <laughs> Hey, can we get one of your guys' t-shirts, man? Check down in the links below. I started a Teespring for everyone that's asking. Uh, these shirts Gravely sent me, but my actual shirts, I had those made personally for my own money, so I don't have a bunch to give away. I have like 10 or 15, but I use for me working. They get messed up. I get rid of some type of stuff. But if you're looking to get shirts, uh, check out the link in the description. I have some Teespring t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that you guys can buy if you want one. I'm jumping out. on the Teespring thing too, but I've got I've got you my should, dude. Uh, it's easy. They take everything out of it. I don't have to worry about shipping. I don't have to worry about, you know, purchasing shirts and, you know, all the right. stuff that that makes it a headache. So they take care of all that stuff for me to the point that we can just Well, I've got I've like got that. a company making my my little logos for my shirts and stuff to put on them, so that way I can just upload it and say, here you go. Uh, what's up, guys? I cut part-time. Don't have account. Don't have a lot of accounts. How do you deal with people paying late or not returning my phone call? Mm-hmm. On new customers, if they are not on my prepay and they want to set it up a different way, I give them two cuts. If it's not paid by then, don't worry about me coming back to your lawn until that is paid. And I make that declaratively known before I even start doing their yard. Uh, some people are just predominantly pay like late payers that's just kind of the way they are on stuff people are just different sometimes you want to talk to them hey do you get paid every friday at your job well i'd like to get paid every friday at my job as well it's kind of the same thing people are just like it uh not returning calls dude let it go it's that kind of stuff man it depends on how much money they owe you or i mean i get people that contact me and leave me voicemails hey we saw your you know you got you're number one on Google. You you do a great job. Can you come by and look at our yard, our, your, our yard or whatever? Call them back. They don't answer. Leave a voicemail. Yeah, no problem. I can come by and look at your yard. I just need an address, which is something I wish people would do more often when they leave voicemails. Leave their address as well. Just send me your address and I'll do it. And you never get anything back. Same thing with text messages. Whether they found someone or not, you know, it's that kind of thing. But I don't know. It's just some people that don't like to call you back. Yeah, I know. uh my new customers, what I started doing with them is I started making them pay a month in advance. Yeah, on some so people, they definitely do that. you pay me a month in advance, and then I'll mow. And then the next month, you pay me a month in advance, and I'll mow. And then you can give me your email address or whatever, and I can start billing you, and we can go from there. But you're going to pay me two months you know, in advance before I ever start giving you the opportunity to be billed. All right. <laughs> I was on 4th of July. My mom and my dad were over here. And she had the same discussion with me. I'm like, next year, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go all prepaid on my clients. She goes, well, I would never pay for someone up front to do work they haven't done. I go, when you go to McDonald's, do you get your food first or do no, you pay right. first? Like, it's kind of weird, isn't it? You pay first. What about Lowe's? You got to get that new uh, you know, new uh, tool you need. You get to walk out with it and use it and then just decide to pay later or do you pay at the register? So it's kind of the same thing, man. And it's yep. not the client's fault. The majority of clients, I'd say 90% of them, are good, honest people. But you do get some people that are just shady. And it sucks that we have to act that way to say, man, everyone's going to prepay. Even all my clients that I've had for, you know, four years that have never been late, that have never been late. They may be so used to just paying, you know, as they go that they like it that way. But it just sucks that some people have to mess that up for others. Right. Jazz and Kelly, thank you. I love mine, too. 
Brian from Top Notch still working a full-time job and running his biz? I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure he still works his full-time job. He has a really good full-time job. Am I lagging to you? Not to me. But I'm not looking off YouTube. I'm looking straight off the Google thing. Oh, yeah. Why does Danny look like he's lagging? But you are clear and smooth. It's because Lanny's just got a Danny's got a laggy face, man. It's welfare uh, internet. It's, it's stock. I can't afford that. Going all morning, Platte City to Parkville, man. It was raining nasty this morning. Here in the lib. Here in the lib. But for what I got to get done, and I still got a lot of people that have contacted me throughout the beginning of this week saying, "Hey, man, don't bother coming. Ain't nothing grown." So. I really only have like one day's worth of work that I can split up between Thursday and Friday or just do it all one of those days. Favorite grass seed to use? I'm a big fan of Macho Mix. Yeah, from uh, Grass Pad or whatever? <laughs> yeah, dude. Grass yeah. Pad's Macho Mix is awesome. Heck yeah. The Sun and Shade or whatever. Yeah, that stuff is great. Nah, tall, I agree. Tall Fescue I Blue. Was it Tall Fescue Blue Gas and Rye? I yep. Believe? Yeah, it's a mixture of all three. Sure is. And it's good as shit. You pay a hundred dollars for a fifty pound bag, but it's good. Yeah, it's expensive, but it works. Just side of Highway seventy in St. Louis, dude. No problem, man. But uh, if you're a good people person, like I've, it's just something I've always been good with in communication. I can usually meet clients, and within the first ten to fifteen minutes, tell whether they're like an honest person wanting lawn service, or they're trying to set you up to have you mow a couple times and not pay. You can, you can usually get that feeling from them even the way their yard might work, look and things like that so. yeah yes Danny. we will be at gie are you gonna be a gie are you going yeah i've you already got everything all you done are going? i'm think me and I'm randy going. and i think we're trying to get to the top crane to go with us too i will be there yeah I'm dude. I'm doing a week this time. It's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I will be down there. I don't want to be rushed. That's, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I, I gotta. I gotta have well, my own time, man. We're leaving. We're leaving Tuesday night. Yep. Like kind of like we did last year, but then I'll be down there, you know, Wednesday morning, and then we'll check into the hotel room, get a couple hours of sleep, maybe, and then go to the thing and get in early. Um, but. I don't know. And then, yeah, we'll be leaving Sunday or Saturday, Saturday morning. Yeah. <coughs> it's not afternoon. monster mix. It's macho mix and it's by the grass pad. Yeah. Macho mix. The GIE is in Louisville, Kentucky. I use a Lodestar trailer now. Lodestar. That thing like is like Lone built. Star. Thing is built to a T. Yeah, one thing I had to do on my trailer is go back through all my E-Tracks and just put more screws in it. I think from factory assembly, they don't put enough in there to actually hold right. machines down. Yeah. Yeah, I put one. Uh, I skipped two. Two holes, and then I put another one, and then I skipped two. Yeah, mine for the factory, they're like every foot. So you have a gap that big with like no screws in it. <laughs> uh, Scott, you don't get invited, man. You just go to Top End GIE Expo and buy your pass and drive out there and go. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's no invites to the GIE Expo. It's a big expo, but your main thing you're going to have to pay attention to if you're not in that area is you're going to have to purchase a hotel. You're going to have to find a way to get there. The tickets, I think, are 15 bucks for the event, so it's super cheap. It's just the, all the other stuff. If you go look on uh, G I Road to GIE 2018, there is a uh, discount code now to get half off. Oh, there you go. Info Wars of Lawn Care. When is it? October. Mm, it's the, when the hell is 17, it? 17, uh, 18, 19, 18, 19, 20, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, it's, uh, hang on, I'll tell you for sure. It is definitely going to be uh, the 16th through the 19th. Well, it's, it's logically the 17th, 18th, and 19th. Right. And that's something I'm not doing this year is prioritizing myself down there, man. I want to have fun and hang out with everyone and BS at like TGI Fridays. Things to do last year that made it a headache. I kept feeling like I had to be somewhere at a certain time. One yep. man. <clears throat> Did you ever go through how ridiculous your GoPro footage was while you were down there when you had it clipped on your backpack? And just hit Dude, I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, I'll send it all to you, and you edit that shit. 
I was about to say it's like hours of nothing, just walking around. <laughs> Dude, it, no, there's a lot of stuff on there, but is there? It's so much. Like, there's like 80 gig <laughs> of footage is what I have from GIE last year, and I started started getting into it, and I'm like, forget it. I'm not even going to worry about it. <laughs> uh, I don't think the rooms are booked now because I just got mine a couple weeks ago, and there was stuff. Uh, Danny, yes, do you yes, use hearing uh, protection? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Well, I've got I've got some of these. These are cool. Uh, hang on, Dewalt. See, I got to have some kind of music going. I see some people out there that use the big over the ear, like muffs. Like I feel like I'm at the shooting range. Can't do it. That's what I use. The ISO oh, tunes, you can't even see it. No, no, no. So what do you use right there? There you go, man. I either yeah, use these or my LG LG nine tens. Nine. Hell yeah, Acme hit me up on a Tuesday night TGI Fridays. You want to come down there? I'll buy you some. <coughs> Is that where we're going? We're going to TGI. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up right now, but I'm definitely gonna go, dude. I love TGI Fridays, man. I did. No, I we used, didn't. That place was here. horrible. No, I love TGI Fridays. I hated the service we got from that lady, but I love TGI Fridays. That was the worst freaking... Yeah. She brought us checks before we even got food. <laughs> I know. And then that dude like spit on the door, and they're like, you're going to come back and wipe this up. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. All right. You need to clean this. Do you guys? Did you guys start out with a camera or a cell phone? Started you a camera, dude. I've, I've always had cameras since I was like six. I've been big into cameras. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, st a lot of guys I started don't... out with a GoPro. I was going to say, a lot of guys don't think about that stuff, but I, I was doing YouTube stuff way before the Song Care channel. Yeah. So, yeah, I've always been into the stuff. I've, I've never been into it. I started out with a GoPro, and then I bought a then I bought a T6i, and then I sold it, and then I bought a T7i, and then I bought a GoPro 4, so now I got two GoPros. And... Dude, I still say to this day... <coughs> that the GoPro Hero 3 and Hero 4 are the best for lawn and landscape because you get the best audio out of the GoPro compared to all the other GoPros that have horrible audio. Yeah, the and 3 plus. you don't have to worry about your camera. Like, you can do whatever you want with it. It's not a big, expensive camera, so you're not worrying about that, and you can just, you know, be rough with it. I'll tell you what I don't like about my ISO tunes. The only thing I do not like about them is they're not loud enough. That's the one thing I don't I don't like about them. That's why I, I switch back and forth between them and my LG 910s because if I want to jam one day, then I'll use my LGs because they get loud. And if I just, you know, am in a uh, mood, I don't want to hear anything or anybody, then I'll use my, you know, ISO tune. What mount do you use? It doesn't look you. Uh, I use the Jaws mount, and I try it. I mean, I still put it on the mower in certain spots, but the best thing about the Jaws – the grip mount has like you can lock it on stuff. You can lock it on anything, man. Go put it on a tree. Go put it on a pole. G4 Outdoors is in here. What's up, Brandy? I need, dude. Hold on. I was gonna ask you if you wanted to go fishing today, dude. But the rain we just got, and I'm not working today. I don't know what you're doing, but I want to go fishing. Just so you know, if you're here, if you're back in it, yeah, that one right there. That's the most versatile. Here, talk, Danny, that way they can see it. Uh, I'm not moving on my screen, but, the, yeah, this thing's awesome. Um, so you can you can put it wherever you want. You can mount it. Then it's got a thing that you can, you know, you can pull this, make it tighter. Uh, yeah. You can adjust it however you want, frontwards, backwards, twist your camera around. You can do whatever you want to with this thing. It's Yeah, it's the most versatile camera, man. You can, you can put it on your trimmer rack. You can hang it from a tree branch. You can put it on uh, their decking in their yard. Just That is the best. For what we're doing, man. It really is. The Jaybird sucks. That's right. Randy learned that the hard way. Uh, that's Randy right there, G4 Outdoors. If you guys haven't subscribed, click his name, G4 Outdoors, and go subscribe. That's our fishing channel, which I plan on doing some fishing today because it's rainy and nasty and awesome. Raining. But, yeah, man, the, the GoPros through the years have definitely increased on their video quality. Even their editing program is not bad anymore, but the audio has just gotten worse, and I've been dealing with it because uh, – Randy got a GoPro Hero 5, I could be mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's 5. And to me, it has the worst audio ever. Worst audio. 
Yeah, because of where they that. place the microphone on the damn thing. Yeah, because I because that's what sucks. They're built to be a hundred percent waterproof with no case, which is fine. That's cool, but you lose your audio that way, and that's why I'm always gonna like the Hero Three and the Hero Four because I have the option of making that a hundred percent water or hundred percent waterproof, or also having good audio. So something I would say to Randy is try to sell that thing for what you got out of it and buy a Hero Three or Hero Four for half the price of that, dude. You're golden on audio and video. Yeah. Nobody's watching stuff in 4K. 1080p is still the best. That's that's the best one right there. I don't know. I've got... <clears throat> Where's my other one? Just subs G4, man. We appreciate that, man. Okay, I'll tell you what I like. Um, I like the 4, and I, yeah. I like the 3 plus silver, but I like the 4. And they're pretty much the same. They are, but I love having the screen built in. See, that's one of the things I don't like about it because it eats my battery alive but but you it's got a button right here uh -huh. like watch this three so you can turn, turn it on, on and off oh my god maybe i'll turn it on all right so and then uh so we've got that right mm -hmm. and then if i press this button yeah i can turn it off okay or i can yeah. turn it back on because to me on the gopro stuff that i shoot there's rarely a time where i'm trying to see what i'm shooting right i'm always just it has such a good wide angle that no matter where you put it, you're getting the shot you need. And then if it's too blown out, I dumb it down in my editing. This one gets real wide, though. Does it? Um, so I, I end up using medium on it a lot. And yeah. uh, so I'll, I'll set it up and watch where I'm at. And then, you know, I'll turn it off to save the battery. But, yeah, I love the four. Yeah, those, those both. <coughs> I think GoPros don't, you know, what is it? Don't. Fix it if it ain't broke type of deal. Those are just All right. cars, man. For yeah, I love the three, this. too. So, Actually, I just bought some new accessories for mine. I got an aluminum case and some other stuff for it. I'm going to do more chest rigging on the uh, fishing channel. I've got a Joe B tripod for mine, too. Actually, I've got two of them. On my big camera. I love it. Yeah, I've got one for that, so I've got three. Yeah. Those are good too. They're BS the way they say like some of them are, you know, this is for the CS like class six cameras or, you know, your point and shoots. They have them set up in different categories. Dude, the one I have that was built for my camera, I can't wrap that around a tree and it hold my camera where it need to be upright and stuff. It, it still doesn't have the strength, but it's right. a very good tripod, man. I may do that, Scotty. I may do that, man. I may go buy a brand new one and do a giveaway about it. Yeah, dude. That's a good one. And they even make knockoff brands that aren't GoPro that are still amazing. My son has one, and it, it lasts a long-ass time and shoots good video. Yeah, we could buy a couple of them. Yeah. Give away, like, three. What made you guys start a lawn care business? Big fan of yours. Um, I started my business to make more money on top of my job, and then I got so frustrated doing what I was doing that I took a full plunge into the lawn and landscape business. So I'm still learning the industry as much as I can. There's a lot of stuff I don't know that I'm always trying to figure out, but there's just something super gratifying about making your own money and, you know, being able to provide and pay for yourself and, you know, not be like stereotypical against society, but everyone says you need to go get a job. You don't need to go get a job. You need to just figure your stuff out to where you can provide for your family. Yep. But that's kind of it, man. I love doing it. I like it's got its days, but it's. Oh yeah, it is, man. Yeah, during summer you second guess that shit, but yeah, it's like why am I... no? It's usually when I'm edging or something, and something flies up and hits me in the face, and I just look around I'm like, what the hell am I doing this? <laughs> Making sure no one saw me because I'm getting ready to start crying any minute. Except the old used one, keep a new one. <laughs> you can keep the new one. <laughs> I'm serious, Randy. Though it's one twenty-five. I'll go fishing. You got the rain, dude. It's not hot and nasty. Well, yeah, the only experience I had before I started was my own property. Yeah, and I did the kid stuff, man. My dad would let me use the mower. I'd go to neighbor's house. Hey, man, I'll mow your yard. 20 bucks. He'd drive me to some relative's house. would do it if you needed money. <clears throat> my parents never just gave me money for the most part. It was always something to do. Clean the bathroom. Like when you're 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, you know. Mow the grass, 20 bucks, and I can go to the skate park and go skateboarding. And that kind of stuff. I will tell you... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be blatantly honest with solo cuts because when I had my website built, uh, solo cuts ask, how much did your business jump when you got a website built? Now, do oh. you have, do you have a, uh, you got a Google, right? A yeah, Google. I'm, me? Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm number one in, on Google okay. for our area. Yeah, so am I. Um, so I did not notice any difference between people who found me, found me through Google business. Yep. Then they would click on my website and then they may fill out a form for me to contact them. Other than that, no. A, a website has not did anything that Google business has not, you know, provided and, and on my end, I can't tell you why or why not. I really can't. I'm not that analytical on it. But I was really high on Google before I had uh, Ring-A-Ding do my uh, website. And I didn't get the calls like I do now. Now it's crazy. Every single day I am getting calls. I'm getting emails from uh, the website, people filling out the form. So I'm sure, just like what you're saying, they're still finding it from Google but my website's ranking high enough where people are click clicking my website before calls to action on my Google page. I don't know why, but yeah, I would say it has helped me a lot. I've definitely doubled my business this year from what I was doing last year. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I definitely noticed, but, but I started a Google business and I started a, you know, I started both, I think this year, maybe. Um, yeah. I'll tell you this much from what I've heard. It's a million times better than flyers. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. Anything's better than flyers. Right, Cause those guys would tell me, Hey man, I spent however much money on 20,000 flyers and handed them all out and got like six clients from it. Like that's not a good turnaround. <laughs> no, thanks. We just, we just save up, man. What are you talking about? Uh -huh. What do you do for work in the winter, man? I struggle my butt off is what I do. Uh, yeah. Like I try to like, and everyone says it like I made shirts on my teespring they say work hard, save hard. Cause the philosophy is there, but I am a habitual spender of money. I've never been good at saving money. Oh, what's that? Sig Sauer put out a new gun. Let me go buy it. Like that's me. I need a new fishing rod. I need a new fishing reel. I need, I'm always buying stuff, which is something I need to get out of the habit of, but I'm also not opposed to getting a part-time job in the winter. I'm not, who cares? You're still doing the things that you want to do, you know? So yeah, it's, it's tough, man. I don't know about everyone else. I'm just not good at saving money. I need to be. I need to work on it. After hot toddies. So where did you learn trick of trade business operations? Uh, research and education, man. I never stop learning. Every day is a reason for me to learn. And just doing it, because everyone thinks you need to have all that knowledge to start a business. You don't. Mm -hmm. You can fake it till you make it, trust me. Because when those things arrive, that'll be a point where you have to deal with it. Say, take DOT stuff, for example. When I started my business, I didn't have a thing about it. Taxes, started my business, didn't know a thing about it. But as you run into those situations, you'll learn pretty quick, whether it's getting on Google, typing in Missouri regulations or whatever. The information's out there to be found. You just got to educate yourself and go find it. That's the way I've learned. Yes, the best way to get your Google business ranked is add pictures, keep it up to date, but reviews are a huge thing. Reviews are big and make sure your reviews are 100% legit because I've heard this from other people that like say... Uh, I'm They're from throw, different areas. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to throw names out there of people that have done this, but they've had people give them reviews that aren't anywhere in your area and that jacks up Google's algorithms. Mm -hmm. All my... Uh, reviews are from my clients in my area. So that keeps you relevant for your area. Um, yeah, but definitely treat it like a social media platform. I'm always posting pictures. I'm always updating things, which keeps Google. Google loves photos. Okay. So if you're tagging your photos correctly, linking them to your business, Google eats that stuff up and will keep you up there on Google. So it's always updating things. Yep. I watch a lot of YouTube and learn a lot of tricks. Um, yeah, dude, YouTube's a big one. Don't take everything as it's for its word, but on YouTube, I take bits and parts of everybody's things, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, might be certain things that Danny does that I can incorporate in my business, certain things that Blake might do in his business that I can incorporate in it. I can't follow each person to a T, and you shouldn't either because everyone has different things in life. Cause say, say Stan genetic makes a video telling you how you need to run your business. He's telling you from Stan genetics angle. He doesn't know that you have four kids and may not have insurance. So be careful on some of the information you get out there, but yeah, there's definitely a lot to learn on YouTube for sure. I feel play the drums on my stomach sometimes. So you guys know, 
<coughs> four seasons in Cincinnati winter depends on the snow. Yeah, dude, I wanted to do snow, but the last three years, man, we've never had enough snow to where you would even be able to make money. It snows and then melts the next day. Not worked in two weeks because of lack of rain. Cutting grass three and a half. I prefer green grass over dusty brown. Yeah, dude, I cut anywhere between three and a half to four, depending on the property. And there's still a couple clients I have that have irrigation systems that I'm mowing. But the majority of them, man, I'm the same right there with you. It's just dried out. Yeah, dude, that's me and Randy's new thing. We're on our fishing show. We're proclaimed YouTube professionals. We know what we're talking about. We have a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's how some of the stuff seems on there, man. Do you guys notify customers or notice turf disease such as brown patch or dollar spot? What I do is I give them a little bit of education that I have. I'm not super insightful when it comes to a lot of the diseases and or like chemicals for fertilization or treating stuff. But I do let them know things that are going on, whether I'm seeing things like that. I can identify such things as dollar spot and brown patch or drying out saying hey you might want to water or this stuff is but i do try to notify them as much as i'm physically able for which really isn't that much i'll be honest with you i've only been doing this full time for a year and a half so my knowledge isn't that great i do want to take those classes sooner than later on a chemical fertilization stuff like that just being able to add those services and make more money in my business do you clean your mower deck after each mow hell no <laughs> After each mow, oh my god, I'd spend more time under my mower than mowing. Mine really don't don't uh, get a lot of buildup. Um, Mine doesn't either. It ejects the grass pretty good. If it's wet yeah. in early morning, obviously you're going to notice. But once a week does great for me, and I yeah. definitely don't notice a different cut quality. Yeah, at the end of, end of the week when I'm done, I yep. wash all of my mowers as clean as possible. And I mean, Andy will tell you. I, I've even I even go as far as having the dealership wax them yep he does danny's one of those people he wants his mowers to look like he does not mow just keep them clean when i show up i want you to think i just started <laughs> i just went and bought this stuff for your property yeah but yeah the water stuff definitely falls on deaf ears a lot but hey man i can't you can't blame them i mean they they it's their lawn they can do what they want it sucks yep. for us but at the same time, we know what we're getting into. We know summer always kind of falls like this. Sorry for disease lawns. I know. I'm sorry for the people, and I have a couple of them, where they're like really good, pristine lawns. You could tell they spend a lot of time. They have a schedule on when they do their stuff throughout the year, and their neighbor just has, you know, dandelions up to your neck. Those those drive me crazy. Mm-hmm. The one thing I really want to learn is crabgrass. That's like how the to, how to that's just, the, just like the one we eliminate that one that I want to learn how to just completely eliminate. Like seriously, that's the one one that just bonds are covered in. Yeah. Um, and it's hard as hell to get rid of. That's the one thing I'd love to learn without having to pull it because some of these yards are covered in it. Right. There's no way you could pull all that crap. Um, but you know, I mean, I, I really, I've tried the pre-emergent and the shit still comes up. Like I cannot for the life of me find something that will actually keep it away. Right. Dude, my yard, it's super old. I just don't care. As long as it's green, I let it be. I get rid of my dandelions and I get rid of my clover that has the white heads on it. Right. Oh yeah. I do this. I do the same thing. And then, you know, we, we aerate every year and reseed and, um, you know, I mean, I, my front yard looks fabulous. My backyard, on the other hand, is pretty much all crabgrass, thanks to my neighbors. But, um, and it just keeps getting worse and worse every year, which is because I ain't doing nothing for it. I'm just mowing it, and then all them seeds are, you know, falling. And next year, it's going to be even worse. But <coughs> my front yard looks fabulous. Um, right. But I, I put a lot of work into it. But I'd love to figure out a way to keep, you know, my other clients' lawns from, you know, an actual pre-emergent that works to keep the shit away. Yeah, I think you got to put it down pretty heavy, and there's like a window of like two weeks when you actually need to have it down for it to work at its best efficiency. Yeah. But mine's the same, man. I'm on a corner lot, so everything that everyone can see looks amazing. I got stripes. I got the best edges in the neighborhood. But my backyard is just trash because I got two dogs that just destroy it, digging holes, finding moles, running around. It's like I'm the backyard I do not care about. <laughs> These dogs have destroyed my backyard. 
Timing is critical. Soil temperature of 55 degrees. Early, I'm early have, then. Dude, I'm going to have to get out the smoke and meats thermometer. Put it in there. First half of the year, I can't get any business. I'm about to give this S away. Just start word of mouth and reviews. Leaves back on the school bus. Social media is a big one as far as Facebook goes. Uh, I guess it depends on what you're doing. But at the beginning, before I knew a lot about what I was doing and researched so much in marketing and things like that, the Facebook uh, groups, like... I've got a video on it. Yeah, I can't remember what they are. What are they called? Swapping shops. Yeah, the swapping shops, like Liberty Swapping Shop or Kansas City Swapping Shop. You can post your services in there. You can even look through the feeds, and someone will be like, hey, looking for someone to mow. Boom, get on there, show them your stuff. And it's free. And it's 100% free. So if Danny's got a video on it, go check out uh, step Danny's by step, channel. Show you how to do it. Yeah, dude, because that's a good one. I never even thought about that. I should do that just so I can annihilate your video. <laughs> but, yeah, no, Facebook was a good one, man. And – I don't know if you're new. It didn't seem like you're super new, but a big one is also like everyone that's relatively close to you, like whether it's relatives or friends, tell them you have a lawn and landscape business. You're looking to take on new clients. Cause if you got, and always goes to the same spider web technique, you send it to five people and those five people send it to five people. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get an outreach of a lot more people. If, if the people you're connecting are doing the same thing with their friends in the area. So, it's and another thing. thing you could do is try, if you don't, get a Google business. Google business is, I mean, Google it's free business. too. I've got somebody here. Hang on. Man. That's the people looking at your house. <laughs> but yeah, Google business is the same thing. It's 100% free. And if you treat it like social media, always post new pictures, engagement, talking about new things you got going in your company. It's something that'll actually step it up for sure. Facebook, yeah, do that for sure. But the main thing is just getting your name out there, man. If, if I was telling any one person, and I'm one of those people that have bit my, built my business 100% off online and social media, you need everything linked to your business. Keep your personal and business a little bit separate if you can. But if I'm starting a business, I'm going to have a Facebook business page. I'm going to have a Facebook Instagram page. I'm going to have a Facebook YouTube page. I'm going to have a Facebook Twitter account. I'm going to have a Facebook. You're going to have a business page for every platform, whether that platform is going to get you business or not, it's always ways for people to find you. So if I type in cut and clean lawn care on Google, you're going to find my cut and clean lawn care Google business. You're going to find my cut and clean lawn care website. You're going to find cut and clean lawn care on Facebook. You're going to find cut and clean lawn care on YouTube. You're going to find cut and clean. Those are all things that are going to link your business to being able to have someone find you. So I definitely recommend having your business on all platforms. Best thing you can do for long term business, area specific. Very much so. Absolutely. And then, I mean, if you're having trouble even getting clients to leave you reviews, if you send, say, do this thing like, hey, uh, here's my Google business account. If you can, leave me a business review and I'll All give right. you $5 off your next cut. Give them some sort of incentive to do it, but those reviews in that area help you out a ton. Danny wasn't in here, but I was just saying, if people are having trouble getting clients to go to Google, and leave you a business review and you can link it and send it straight to their phone. All I have to do is click it. Sometimes oh yeah. Offer them a, offer them a discount. Yeah. And I'll say sometimes it's good to do a discount. Hey, if you leave me a Google review, I'll give you $5 off your yep. next cut or whatever. Oh, yeah. And it gives them a little incentive to do it. Yep. Yeah. You can go to Google and copy that link from your yep. phone and then send it to them. And all they got to do is literally click on it. It'll take them straight to it. So they ain't got to, they ain't got to look anything up. It's, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, those are bad. Three Lakes, the worst one is Home Advisor. I can't tell you how many times I've yelled at the guy on the phone to take me off that damn call on list, but Home Advisor is astronomically cra crazy and relentless. They're on it. They're stalkers. They're, They're creepy. All right. They're and on call, it. And the same guy will call you from a different number four times a day. I have tried the next door app and I've had no luck with it whatsoever. Dude, on the next door app, you get a lot of the soccer moms on there. Uh, this isn't a platform for. I've had that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This isn't for you know soliciting. This is for me to tell you when my dog's out. And that's what the next door app's kind of turned into for me. So I don't use the next door app. What was the other one you were telling me about? I didn't like it either. Uh. It was kind of like an Angie's list, but it wasn't Angie's list. I can't remember what the hell the name of it was. I can't think of it neither. Damn. I haven't used uh, any Thumbtack. Thumbtack. Thumbtack, yeah. No, I didn't get nothing from Thumbtack. Yeah. Yep. 
and I didn't like how they had predetermined prices. All right, yeah. Like, no, like $35? No, how about I make my own price when I show up and bid the property? Yeah, it's crazy. NBA Jam? No, nope. wrong. Ooh, that's like NBA Live. I've got a lot of stuff going on, man. I've got new business cards getting made. Um, there you go. I've got, oh my God, I've got all kinds of crap going on right now. It's crazy, dude. LTD knows what's up. I get those emails all the time. Yeah. So I was looking at your website, and it looks like you're missing a lot of things. I'm like, I don't think so. I think it's doing all right, man. Yeah, I think it all depends on your area, man. Yeah. I think it all depends on your area and, like, your business. Like, I've got a buddy that uses Thumbtack for pest control and blows it out of the water, but I, I couldn't get anything off of, you know, lawn care. Right. And that's kind of what I was talking to them about earlier. Like, when you start, especially today, today is different, dude. It's not pen and paper anymore. When you start a business... You need to have that business on everything. You should have your business on Facebook, Google, Instagram, Twitter, even if Twitter's not used by you. Guess what? There might be some client out there that uses Twitter and they're able to find you on there. So you want to be on all those searchable platforms, man. Doesn't matter what it is. You want to be on there. I've even gotten business from YouTube and I would never get on YouTube personally to find like a plumber. Like, that's not what I'm going to do. But I've had people that have seen my stuff on there and, and been like, oh, I just realized that you're in our area. I've had that happen. So you never know what someone's going to search for a service on or try to get educated in that way. But I'd be on all of them, every single one of them. I've gained business off of YouTube. Yep. You love people. And opportunity. Like, people. even business opportunities. The things people hate on all the time. But just for me, starting my business and getting on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and Twitter has gotten companies to send me free products to try during the year. Guess what? That is awesome. Just from putting my name out there and working at it and trying to grow it. I've gotten mowers from companies. So you never know what's going to come from just putting yourself out there. Besides getting clients and business, these other businesses that may want to provide you with other things to get your opinions on it. So, I mean, dude, be on everything. Be everywhere. No matter what it is, when someone types something, you want to, you want them to be seeing you first when it pops up. The one thing I quit doing is Twitter. See, I don't do Twitter. Yeah, I quit, I quit doing it. I, my, my new business cards had the Twitter emblem on it, and I, yeah. I messaged them, and I'm like, can we take that off, please? Yeah, like, I don't. I don't do Twitter. Yeah, I don't use it. You don't see me posting on Twitter. The only thing I think Twitter does, if I'm not correct, is every time I post a new YouTube video, I have it linked to where that pops up on Twitter. So right. if someone wanted to, they could find me on Twitter. But there's no communication with me on Twitter. But there's information for you to find me in other ways on there. But yeah, I don't use Twitter at all. Yeah, I don't either. I hate it. Hate Snapchat's it. the same way. I got a pretty big Snapchat following, but I just don't use it. Yeah, it, it just doesn't. No, oh, me. It's different. All right. Well, I got to get off here anyway. Nobody right, dude, you knows, out. So, yeah, I'm out. I've got to get this stuff taken care of, and then yep. I'll be back on later. Maybe we can do a, something more night or something or Friday, Saturday. I don't know. Yeah, man. Just hit me up whenever. We'll do it. Y'all have a good one. Oh, he gone. He gone, folks. Guys, I'm getting ready to hop off here. What about IG? Instagram? Yeah, Instagram's a good one. I've gotten a lot of stuff from Instagram. I got a pretty good following on Instagram. Instagram's good for the point of uh, being able to show new clients things. I like a lot, if that makes any sense to you. So if I go to a new client and they're like still kind of not knowing what you do, you can get on Instagram and show them all the work that you do. Check out this property, the stripes that I can lay down. So it's you can use it as an advertising platform and also people can still find you from there. And you can use that to link your website. So. If someone's on Instagram and they're searching lawn care and you pop up and they go to your profile, you got your link right there for your website that they can click and go. So you just want everything linked to where you're going to be able to be found. But yeah, Instagram's good. I like Instagram a lot. I like Facebook a lot. I like YouTube a lot, obviously. I like fishing a lot, which is something I plan on doing. I like the sound of my, I think it's my dryer making that noise. But yeah, guys, 145. This is going to be about an hour, so I'm going to stay on here for maybe like 15 minutes more. If you guys got any questions, let me know. I didn't I didn't uh, think the uh, viewership would be very big on this video anyways, because it is the middle of the day on a weekday. I wouldn't be watching a lot. 
those child days. <laughs> yeah, I got a five-year-old. He's pretty well maintains himself for sure. But I remember when he could not do anything unless you were in there with him. I remember those days too, but it is what it is. Glad they're over. Still whines though. You gotta put him to work, man. Have him clean the mower decks. That's what I would do. That's a strike right there. I don't know if you guys saw it, but that was a strike. Uh, we got him going up to the block. Looks like he's going to throw a curveball low inside, and he's out. So that retires the side, the Rays. Can't see it. I think it was the Angels. I should just do play by play the whole time we're on here. What is that, hockey? Everyone has like a French name. Laroe passes to Gretzky. Gretzky goes in with a hard check, goes around the back for the hat trick, and decides to pass it back out. <laughs> I should just do play by plays for video games all day. I don't know what that is. Little Mermaid? What do you guys know about the Little Mermaid? Watch out for that shark. He's going to get you, Little Mermaid. Ariel, you better run for your life. You're in danger. Run. <sighs> that was close. Guys, I appreciate you all checking this video out. hope you got something out of it because I did by just, you know, killing some time while it rains. I think the rain subsided. So I think me and Randy are going to go fishing and hopefully put up a new video on G4 Outdoors. Like I said, if you haven't checked it out, go check out G4 Outdoors and subscribe to my second channel, guys. I appreciate y'all coming on here and hanging out with me for a little bit while I talk to Danny Lanier. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Guys, I'm going to get off here. Got some stuff I need to get done. Hold on. What's the chances on getting on a live sometime with you? Uh, 100%, man. I'm always good. I love these Talk and Shop podcasts because I just love to uh, get to know people. So absolutely, man. If you want to come on here... And uh, BS with me for like an hour or so, the chances are 100%, man. I'm always looking for people to do these with. Because everyone has different information to pass on to people. You don't want to always have the same people on here. You want to get different angles. So that's 100%. Guys and gals. Next live. Man, it's always tough for me to stuff. Plus, I got some cards I want to give out to you guys, man. All the new subscribers and everyone that helped me get over 10,000 subscribers. It's crazy for this lawn care business thing that I'm doing on here. And I want to give away some Amazon gift cards. So I'm going to get that planned however I can and however I want to. The thing is, I don't want to do it like this. just me sitting here. I want other people to get involved. Why does Blake upload a few minutes after you do every time? I think it's because I give him... Maybe a little bit of motivation. He's like, Andy's out there doing something. I'm going to drop a video. Which I hope it does. Because I've always liked Blake's content. I know what he's capable of when he puts his mind into it. He can do some cool stuff. But Blake's a great guy. I don't know why he does that. I'll call him and ask him. Best way to get a hold of me. Uh, Facebook Messenger or uh, Instagram's tough, too, because i got to go through all the DMs. I'd say Facebook Messenger, dude. Facebook Messenger is a pretty easy one. But, guys, thanks, everyone, for coming in here. Man, if you want to do the live, hit me up, man. We'll definitely get that organized where you can. I appreciate every single one of you. Like, comment, and subscribe, like always. But I'm going to try to go fishing. We'll see you guys in the next one.